Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. You have heard that it was said to them of old, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. Words taken from the gospel for this, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and we will hear from the communion antiphon today. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Joseph the patriarch was a gifted man, receiving divine dreams and many other favors from both heaven and earth. He was the youngest of the sons of Jacob until Benjamin was born. And sadly, his fellow brothers, the other sons of Jacob, fell into deadly envy of Joseph, such that we read of them in the sacred history of Genesis. And his brethren, seeing that he was loved by his father more than all his sons, hated him, and could not speak peaceably to him. And a little later in the same chapter, and when they saw him afar off, before he came nigh them, they thought to kill him. And they said one to another, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Come, let us kill him and cast him into some old pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him. And then it shall appear what his dreams avail him. One of the seven capital vices is envy. As a capital vice, as a deadly sin, envy is a font of evil bubbling up and flowing over many other sins. Some of these sins or daughters of envy are slander, calumny, Rejoicing over the misfortunes of others, hatred of one's neighbor, gossiping, murmuring, detraction, and resentment. Envy is opposed to charity. It destroys peace of soul, peace of mind, threatens good health. When you're all wound up about something that you're envious about, you start losing your good health. And it brings one into disfavor with others. To counter this vice, St. Peter teaches us in the lesson today, the opposite. Let us decline from evil and do good. Let him seek after peace and pursue it. How are we going to do this? Well, let's look into envy a little bit more. Envy is defined simply as unhappiness, sadness, or discontent at the excellence, the success, good fortune, or talents of another. The envious sees these as a lessening of his own good, his own excellence. As the charitable man would rejoice at the good of another, the envious sees another's gain as his loss, and as an injustice done to him. Normally, when one sees an injustice, they also become angry. So we can add anger as one of the daughters of envy as well. And thus the scribes and the Pharisees were perpetually angry at his majesty. They murmured against him time and time again, as well as committing sins of slander and calumny and so on. Such are the sins bubbling up from the evil font of envy. Now let's take note that envy is not to be confused with the discontent we may feel in seeing ourselves without the possession another has. Rather, envy is seeing another's gain as our loss. Envy is also not to be confused with emulation, which is the ambition to equal or surpass another. Listen to St. John of the Cross. He says, if any envy accompanies charity, 
It is a holy envy by which they become sad at not having the virtues of others. But they rejoice that others have them and are happy that all others are ahead of them in the service of God. Since they themselves are so wanting in his service. So a holy envy wants to emulate, not disparage, not detract from the good of others. It wants to say, I'm going to do that too. I'm going to try to do it better. That's a holy envy. Now, the source of the vice of envy is pride, self-love. It's often found in those suffering from a low self-esteem. St. Gregory the Great confirms this in commenting on the passage from Job that reads, Envy slayeth the little one. Envy slayeth the little one. A passage from Job. Gregory the Great says, For it is impossible for us to envy any but those whom we think to be better than ourselves in some respect. And so he is a little one who is slain by jealousy. For he bears witness against his very own self that he is less than him by envy of whom he is tormented. It is hence that our crafty foe in envying the first man despoiled him in that having lost his estate of bliss, he knew himself to be inferior to Adam's immortality. It is hence that Cain was brought down to commit the murder of his brother in that when his sacrifice was disregarded, he was maddened that Abel, whose offering God accepted, was preferred to himself and his brother, who's being better than himself, his younger brother, was his aversion. He cut off that he might not be at all. He murdered him. Again, Esau was fired to the persecution of his brother for the blessing of the firstborn being lost which for that matter he had himself parted with for a mess of pottage. He bewailed his inferiority to him, his younger brother, whom he surpassed by his birth. Again, his own brethren sold Joseph to Ishmaelites, as we started this sermon off with today. His own brethren sold him as a slave given the mystery of the revelation of his being superior to them, being disclosed, they set themselves to resist his advancement, that he might never become superior to themselves. Again, Saul persecutes his servant, David, by throwing a lance at him, for he dreaded that man growing beyond his own measure, whom he perceived to be daily waxing bigger by his great achievements in the virtues Thus, St. Gregory concludes, he is a little one who is slain by envy. Thus, Solomon says in wisdom, God created man incorruptible and to the image of his own likeness he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death came into the world and they follow him that are of his side. You want the devil to be your leader? Give way to envy. St. Gregory the Great says, Envy is a self-inflicted pain that wounds the pining spirit, which is racked by the prosperity of another. The greatest of the popes, Gregory, then explains that it can undermine and destroy all our virtues, even all our good works, making them rotten and worthless no matter how good they may appear on the surface. As envy is a sin against charity, of its nature, the theologians tell us, it is grievous. Of its nature, it's grave. However, guilt is usually diminished by lack of consent or the insignificance of the object envied. The most serious sin of envy occurs when someone is jealous of the supernatural gifts or graces which another receives for his salvation, for his work in the church. Listen to St. John of the Cross again. 
In regard to envy, many of them feel sad about the spiritual good of others and experience sensible grief in noting that their neighbor is ahead of them on the road to perfection. And they do not want to hear others praised. Learning of the virtues of others makes them sad. They cannot bear to hear others being praised without contradicting and undoing these compliments as much as possible. Oh, if he only knew that person as I do, we might say. Instead of saying, I hope they pull me up when they get ahead. Their annoyance grows because they themselves do not receive these plaudits and because they long for preference in everything. All of this is contrary to charity, which St. Paul says rejoices in the truth. Now, the chief weapons in conquering the spirit of envy are hope, hope in heavenly bliss, verticality. More on that in a moment. A deep humility is required to overcome envy. We accept our place and we take our place, not looking at everybody else's place. We also, however, do not exclude a proper self-esteem and self-love, love of self, recognizing where we are and who we are, which is useful in conquering envy, as well as a sincere and supernatural love of all men. These things conquer it. That Would that we could say with the saints, I am nothing, I can do nothing, I am worth nothing. And that's okay, as long as I can serve and love God. St. Gregory the Great, he says, it is a hard thing for one man not to envy another that which he earnestly desires to obtain. It's hard, we all feel it. What to do? Let him then, who longs to be holy and entirely void of the bane of envy, says the great Pope, set his affections on that inheritance. Uh Aha, on that inheritance which no number of fellow heirs serves to stint or shorten, which is both one to all and whole to each, which is shown so much the larger as the number of those that are vouchsafed to, as vouchsafed it, is enlarged for its reception. What's he speaking of? Heaven! There's no shortage of goods in heaven. As we possess God himself, goodness himself, all is available there. All is full and fulfilled there. Verticality, dearly beloved, is the solution to envy. We need to go to heaven if we're going to solve it. St. Gregory continues, And so the lessening of envy is the feeling of inward sweetness arising. And the utter death of it is the perfect love of eternity. The utter death of envy is the perfect love of eternity. For when the mind is withdrawn from the desire of that object, which is divided among a multitude of participators, as we have limited goods here on earth, The love of our neighbor is increased in proportion as the fear of injury to self from his advancement is lessened. And if the soul be wholly ravished in love of heavenly land, it is also thoroughly rooted in the love of our neighbor. They go together, and that without any admixture of envy, says St. Gregory, Whereas he adds, he is a little one who loves earthly things. He is a great one that longs after the things of eternity. The theologians point out that the moral conflict aroused by envy has three stages. Each marked by the various daughters or daughter sins that flow from this vice. Number one, first stage. It begins by striving to ruin another's reputation, either secretly gossiping, if you only knew what I knew about that person, or openly detracting, I'll tell you all about it. That's the first step. Number two, it increases without efforts to defame others. It increases with our efforts to defame others. If these are successful, there's joy at another's misfortune. 
If unsuccessful, sorrow at another's prosperity results. And then finally, third of all, it ends in hatred. Hatred of neighbor, first of all, and then since our neighbor's good is from God, envy is also the mother of hatred of God himself. It is a deadly vice. As faithful Christians, lovers of good order and virtue, we must not allow this trajectory to take its course in our lives. Instead, let's put a halt to it by looking up and at the end of all things and humbly accept our lot in life in the view of the end. This slays envy. So say to yourself regarding anything that makes envy rise up in your hearts, if I needed that thing or that person in my life, then God would provide it for me. As the act of hope promises, God has given us promises. He will help us get to heaven. If I need that thing or that person, God would give it to me. If I need it to get to heaven, He promises to supply what is needed for me to make it to heaven. And if I needed that, he would give it to me. If he does not give it me, then it is because it would hinder my progress to my eternal home. It must be that I don't need it. In this way, we start at the end and we work backwards to place all things in perspective We're asking, what is this to all eternity? And this will pass, but heaven will not. Now we're in a good position to say of those whom we may envy something about, God bless them and we wish them well. May God provide all that they need to get to heaven. If they need that to get to heaven, God bless them. That breaks it. Envy will die in our souls and love of neighbor will rise up because love is based on well-wishing. Thus, St. John Cassian says, we shall therefore be able to expel this most pernicious passion from ourselves once our mind is occupied constantly with spiritual meditation. Then we may raise it up. We may raise it up with a hope of things to come. And by contemplation of promised blessedness, there it is, contemplation of things to come and promised blessedness. That's the way out. For we shall be able to overcome every kind of sadness, every kind of injustice, whether that which derives from previous anger or that which befalls us when a loss of money or some other disadvantage strikes us or that which proceeds from an irrational turn of mind. When we are ever rejoicing at the sight of things eternal and to come. And when we remain steadfast and are neither cast down by present events nor carried away by good fortune, viewing both as empty and soon to pass. Thank you, John Cashin. In this way, dearly beloved, we decline from evil, the evil of envy, and we do good. We seek after peace and we pursue it. And we long for that one thing, heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.